Hi, this is Kurt Jacobs, founder and creator of Moxie Talk with Kurt Jacobs. We're here at the Idea Festival with Wendy Whalen. She's a native Louisvillian and has spent 30 years with the New York City Ballet. We want to ask her a few quick questions while she's here at the festival. What inspired you on your career path and, and the ability to basically do two careers in ballet from what you've told us? That's great. Uh, I think the curiosity, um, the physical capability, because my, my body was really strong. Um, I, d I think the, the unending learning that I could get from it, and I just couldn't, could never get to the end of what I had to learn and digest as, as an artist. Yeah. Now, the mission of the Idea Festival is basically to stay curious. So you're going to leave a long and lasting legacy. So the question I have for you is, what would you like that to be 40, 50 years from now from, for maybe future ballerinas, ballet individuals, however you want to couch it? You already said it. Stay curious. That's my, my mantra, my motto. is That's what I'm known as, is a curious ballerina. So I, that's what I've done my whole life, and that's what I continue to do even at 50 now. Is there anything you would have done differently, know what you know now? Um, I might have started yoga sooner, <laughs> but I'm doing it now, all? so yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah. And our next question is, what is the best thing about the Idea Festival for you so far? Everything. I want to go back to school, like right now. I, uh, I didn't go to college because I had a 30-year ballet career, and I, right. I, I focused fo solely on that, and now I'm f a freelance dancer, and, and the world is my oyster, and mm -hmm. I can literally do whatever I want. Right. Um, and after today... I definitely want to do more. I want to be more active socially, and I want to be more educated, and I want to um, inspire. I want to be a mentor. Do you feel like you might actually teach, go on the other side of it, or is that of interest to you? I, I, I already do teach. She does teach. I do teach <laughs> but I might want to teach um, in a different way. Than okay. I might want to teach beyond just ballet, okay. which is what I teach now. Okay. So maybe I can teach more... Uh, uh, I don't know, just be more of a mentor kind of teacher, okay. more of how to be, not how to do something. Now, this question's more of a 30,000 foot type question, a little oh, different. No, I don't hope, well, I hope not. If you have, you already have yeah. in the career you've done. In terms of the industry, your profession, ballet, how has it changed and, and where do you see it headed in the future for future generations? Oh, that's hard to say. There's been a huge change in social media um, since social media. Um, dancers are promoting themselves. They're getting their own voices. They're getting a lot big following. And you're seeing who they are and how they want to present themselves. Okay. Um, so for good or for, for bad, um, that's a huge change to the culture of ballet. Uh, there's a lot more dancers doing com commercial selling things commercially um which is bizarre but you know dancers are athletes they deserve to be rewarded for for the work they put in and um so that's just very different do you, yeah. do you feel there's a wendy whalen out there right now in other words 30 years from now there could be someone else like you and be that long and with the longevity that you had and the success i hope so i hope so yeah yeah yeah. This is our signature question that we use in the longer style interview. When the great day comes, Wendy, how do you want to be remembered? You know, if it all ended today, how would you like to be remembered? It's a loaded question. It's a loaded question. Um, I want to be remembered for doing my best, um, treating people as I would want to be treated, mm -hmm. um, being kind, and, um, and being grateful. Yeah, that's great. I think that is great. Thank you for spending your time with us, Wendy. My pleasure. Thanks for being on Moxie Talk with Kurt Jacobs. Best of luck at the festival. Thank you. Hi, this is Kurt Jacobs, founder and host of Moxie Talk with Kurt Jacobs, and we're here at the Idea Festival with Nat Irvin. He is a futurist, author, innovator, and teacher, and we want to ask him a few words about the Idea Festival today and about his travels. So what has inspired you on your career path? I think, uh, Kurt, the, the best answer is the best books, you know, reading a lot of books, meeting a lot of interesting people. And I think the intersection of meeting interesting people and reading good books means that you start to find things within yourself that you didn't know existed. Right. So I'd say the easiest way to think about uh, being inspired is to be around people who will inspire you with new ideas. Then, of course, as I said, reading interesting books. I read a lot. Okay. All right. I try to read a new book every 10 days.
Wow. And so, and I have a great list of friends who recommend books. And so a lot of my ideas about the future, a lot of my ideas about what I teach mm -hmm. come from things that I read, talks that I'll listen to, um, intersecting, intersecting with people whose opinions I may not have heard before, or right. ideas I may not have heard before. So it's a whole variety of meeting different kinds of people, the intersection. Now, right. you do audio books or the real deal? I, I use the old school books. Yeah, I don't particularly, That's great. I don't particularly care for the uh, electronic books. Okay. I, 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 I mean, I will listen to books from time to time, but when I really want to understand an idea, it is me with the book, with a pen, writing, taking notes, the okay. old-fashioned way, going into my mind. If I really want to understand a concept, mm -hmm. I listen to it. That is, I will read it. I will write about it. I will experiment with it. I will touch it. I work with it. So I like the old-fashioned books, yes. In the hopes for your best dreams in, say, 40 or 50 years, basically your legacy for your hopes and dreams, what would that look like in your mind? Oh, that's a great question. I can tell you, it looks like young people who have grown up. Okay. They're like sequoias all over the world that I've had a chance to impact, and they've grown up into their own fullness of themselves, and that I had some small uh, part of impact in that and helping them to become that sequoia tree that would then give birth to other sequoia trees or tall oak trees that give birth to acorns that didn't grow. I'm just basically hoping to repopulate a forest of people smart who want to make the world better. That's what I'm That's after. That's all I'm after, man. <laughs> That's a great metaphor. Now, what have you found so exciting about the Idea Festival so far? Well, of course, this is the first day, which is Thrivals. And so the thing that always inspires you if you come to Thrivals is going to be the quality of the interaction with young people. They're very smart. And it's particularly true for young minority kids who oftentimes are overlooked, who people don't think they have great ideas. They're absolutely brilliant, okay? Just absolutely brilliant. When you hear them in their space, you'll see, look at the intellect. This is a potential person who's going to cure cancer. Here's a person who's going to figure out the ethics about artificial intelligence. Here's a person who's going to remake capitalism. Here's a person who's going to create a platform better than Facebook. Who's going to be somebody here who's going to figure That's out very true. To, to fix the water? Who's going to fix the air? Who's going to find new ways for us to govern ourselves? That's the key thing that boomers, older people don't understand, is that the future is literally the young people is not the boomers. Young people have a better understanding of how to do things, redesign things, simpler, quicker, using technology, and they do it better. Some of us need to move on. That's a great answer to that question. Now this next one's more of a like 30,000 foot up type question in terms of, the, well they kind of have been, but a little more introspective in my opinion. In terms of your industry, your profession, yeah. whether it's innovation or futurist or author, what do you see of a change coming on the horizon that may or may not be beneficial to the industry? Well, I would say this, that when you think about the future, here are a few things that are definite. That's the way to think about the future, the things that are given. The number one thing facing America is the demographic singularity, which I've written about, which is when the shift in America goes from being majority white to majority non-white. And we're well underway, and that's going to, that's going to be like a social hurricane. Okay? And that's going to be for some time, and people have got to get used to that. And we're not used to that. America's never had it, but America's going to have to get used to that, okay? yeah. number one. Number two, the other thing is we're aging rapidly. Yes. Aging is the most powerful force facing the future, not just in this country, but around the world. Mm -hmm. People don't understand this, Kurt. No, okay? they, don't. they don't understand this. My students don't understand it. You can tell them, but people don't fundamentally understand the mathematics of aging. Aging impacts every economy, it, every system. It, it, it impacts the, the, work, the way that we work. Uh, instead of having uh, daycare centers, we'll have senior care centers. Now that means that employees have got to begin taking care of their parents. Oh, that's a whole different thing. It is also going to challenge some of our long-held beliefs about what, what are rights. People think about health care as not a right, it's not a right. Wait till you have to take care of your parents. Okay, wait till you have to take That's care the of old rip. Then of you're going to start to think, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. Then you're going to see that we're all tied together. These, these ways that we have thought about things, they're based on a much younger population. Mm -hmm. Children and people having children. I can tell you, people who are looking at this interview now, mm -hmm. if I ask them how many children do they have in their family, most of them are going to say two, maybe one. Right. If the older you get, the older you are, the more likely you would have had three or four. Mm -hmm. The younger you are, more likely you would have had one. Okay. Now, that's unsustainable mathematically on the old way that we've had life mm -hmm. structures. That's all economic systems that way. 
It's not, it's not sustainable. It's not. Okay, it's, it's, it's just mathematics, okay? It, and then the other thing is we have to understand, which is why I put this in context of the demographic singularity, those people who will be taking care of the future, they're not white, they're, they're, they're non-white. They're brown, they're, they're other, they're, and of course they'll be white as well, but that means we've got to invest in that. Otherwise, we're done. Okay, it's not personal, okay? That's it, it's not personal, it's mathematics. Okay. It's mathematics. If you're not there, you can't have an impact on the future. If you are there, you can. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there you are. There you are. Uh, there you are. Straight from the futurist mouth, ladies and gentlemen. Now this is our signature question that we ask in our more traditional style of interview. But when the great day comes, Nat, how do you want to be remembered? You know, God forbid it all ended today. How do you want to be remembered? I want to be remembered as a great husband, great father, great friend. Main thing is, though, even as a great husband, is I want, to, I want my children to rem remember me as having loved them, nurtured them, but not only them, others as well. So that's the main thing. Family, you got to start off with first. Nat, thank you for being on Moxie Talk. I appreciate you spending some time with it. My great honor. And all the best to you, all right? Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. And that's Kurt Jacobs with Moxie Talk from the Idea Festival. <laughs> All right, John, thanks for being here. My and, uh, pleasure. I'm actually talking to Kurt Jacobs at the Idea Festival. What have you found exciting so far about the Idea Festival and how has it impacted you today? Uh, the, the best thing I learned, I learned when you get out and talk to real people, get out of Washington into America, uh, you have a diverse group by age, diverse group by ethnic, racial background, by economic background. Uh, you learn. You, and you, you, you reinforce the view that people are frustrated with Washington, but you also find a whole bunch of common sense people who are different. If you get them in a room, guess what? They could probably figure out, they probably realize, maybe it'd be a shock to some of them, you might agree on 50 or 60% of this. It's true. Oh, um, so conversation as opposed to confrontation. As long as you find it in America, you don't find much of it in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it so much. I'm Kurt Jacobs here at the Idea Festival. We just spoke with John King, and we'll have more to come. Hi, I'm Kurt Jacobs, host and founder of Moxie Talk, and I'm here at the Idea Festival today with Anshu Gupta. He is a social entrepreneur and activist, and welcome. Thank Thanks for spending some time with us. What have you enjoyed so far at the Idea Festival? I think it's a very, very free space, and um, I can talk about my session where people are so engaged. Uh, uh, I think that's that's the most important. But I, there is this diversity of crowd which I can which I can see here. There are right. there are young high school students and there are the you know the people who are who are pretty elderly people. So I mean that's it's great. nice it's nice to see that mix of crowd that's listening. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. What has inspired you on your career path and, and where you've gone with social entrepreneurship? You know this is what I always tell people that when I started I maybe I didn't even know how many E's come in entrepreneur. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> because so, so you didn't start to become an entrepreneur, but there was something which was troubling you, and and you thought you have a solution. Whether that solution will is the solution or not, we don't know. But right. uh, so that's how this journey started. Something which started bothering on the issue of clothing. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's how we started, and uh, now fine, it's, it's a different game because when you go deeper or uh, maybe more deeper into something. You you do find different paths, and you you find you do find different issues related to that. Okay. So this is kind of your perfect dream question, as I call it. So in your vision, your kind of legacy for your dreams and whatnot, say 40, 50 years from now, what would that look like? Well, never in my life I I I always tell people that a I want to in my life I want to. Leave a, you know, in Hindi, I had written something which says, "Match hona chahta hu ek lakir," which means I want to leave a line. Okay? okay, so so that you just see the line and you remember that there was there was something, you know. Yes. That's it. And as an institution, what we have created, if I talk about Gunj, uh, very simple, and uh, we want to make it absolutely open source. I I remember in the recent uh, the Maxis Award when we received uh, the acceptance speech says that we are giving you a copyright to copy our ideas. Okay, so that it becomes open source, and as an institution, we just don't want to grow as an organization. We want to grow as an idea, which needs to be replicated, copied all across the globe. 
because we feel that uh, you know with uh, with little tweaking all across it can be used anywhere in the world okay. now this next question i want to ask is more of a profession industry type question where do you see any challenges or changes on the horizon in your profession of social entrepreneurship or activism and that can be worldwide it is it is going through a very challenging phase and and social activism and uh, social reform has always been challenging you know because you are ultimately challenging the status quo uh, you are you are challenging the way things are things are operating uh, it needs a speed it needs pace it needs many many more people to join because i always tell people that you know this world has uh, problems in volume you need solutions in volume you also need people who work on those solutions in volume then only it can be solved the other important thing if when i talk about the entrepreneurship especially the social entrepreneurship and activism i always tell people that there is no space for either or okay, okay? just go for end because this world has enough space for everyone to operate so why do we really yeah why do we get into the intellectual debate you know whether this is good or that is good if you feel this is good please go ahead with that okay. if someone else feels that that is good let that person go ahead with that okay. you know i mean why do we really spend time money energy in all these useless debates of either or so this this is space this is space needs to be much wider much open more people need to join and also you know somewhere we need to very important part which i personally feel if we are into this field is that is start looking at the issues of this world okay. not through your lenses but through the lenses of people for whom you are trying to work okay. and then only the solutions will come you know right now it's our own arrogance of you know maybe speaking good language or studying in good schools mm-hmm. or wearing good clothes i think that's the arrogance which whole lot of us have and that's the that's the disconnect with the people for whom we all try to work okay now this next question we've asked all of our guests in our more traditional long form type of interview it's called our legacy question so on to you know if it all ended today god forbid it was your last day on earth how would you want to be remembered by your family and friends and colleagues oh just a doer just a doer just a doer i think that's what people even today think about me because i i always tell people that this world does not need thinkers anymore you know enough of them and in any case the the kind of thought process we have in legacy from so many good beautiful people even if we just work on 10% of that this world will be a different place okay. so this country this world does not need thinkers anymore it needs doers it needs actions it needs initiatives because at the end of the day when i go i i i want to i want to live a better place sure very simple yeah. Yeah. i like that i think it's a great note to end on anshu thank you so much for being on moxie talk oh my gosh i just love the idea festival have you learned anything at this year's idea festival that you didn't know before So many things um I really love learning about how people think. Um everyone has a different thought process and a way they look at things in life. So hearing for one we just heard an artist talk about how you shouldn't convey a message but instead through your work you should see how other people perceive it. And I think that was really important because a lot of the times in these conferences there's a very specific message you're going to hear and a very specific kind of thesis at the beginning that's going to repeat it at the end. And um hearing that one was definitely different and I mean it it'll change the way I think as well. I'm Kurt Jacobs, host and creator of Moxie Talk here today at the Idea Festival with Emily Dreyfus. She's a senior writer. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. So what have you found so interesting about the Idea Festival so far and how has it impacted you? Well, this is my first time to Louisville. Um I came to Kentucky once when I was a youngin and I went on the Bourbon Trail. <laughs> There you go. Um but I've just loved this city and everyone I met here is so thoughtful and I yeah. I've loved learning about the manufacturing industry and how many computer scientists we have and so I've been really inspired. So who or what inspired you on your career path? Oh geez. Um you know, I'm a writer at heart and so I'm I'm inspired by novelists and poets. Um but in journalism uh I love Diane Reem. I love right. uh I, I love everyone. I yeah. I love um Terry Gross. If I could okay. be anyone, okay. I would like to grow up to be Terry Gross <laughs> on NPR's Fresh Air. <laughs> That's great. So in the vision of your best dreams, kind of like your hopes, you talked about disruption today. Mm-hmm. What would that look like in 40 or 50 years? Oh, Eve. Yeah. <laughs> um we can come back. To yeah, that. <laughs> well, no, I mean I just I guess like I I would really like world peace. Yeah. Um no, I would I would like 
for people to be able to do what they want to do and be empowered um, and to have less discrimination and inequality. I think mm -hmm. that we're at a really polarized moment in American history yeah. and uh, we are unequal in terms of our access to information. We're unequal in terms of who is represented in government. Um, and I would really like to see a stabilization and an equity among all different sorts of people. Sure. So in terms of the profession or industry that you're in, how are you seeing it change for the future generations, writers, journalists? Oh, wow. Well, journalism, as you know, uh, as a journalist, is going through and has been experiencing a huge change for many years. Um, I think we're coming out of the age of fractionalization of okay. news sites, um, which led to so many layoffs. But we, we still we have print, we have Internet, um, television. Things are so different, right. but I think that the biggest change facing our industry right now is a lack of trust in the media at all. Mm -hmm. And I find myself, you know, I get up every single morning with the goal of trying to tell the truth and figure out what the truth is and convey right. that truth to people. And yet um, the opinion of what journalists do every morning is the exact opposite of that. And so I think the biggest challenge facing our industry is to earn back our readers' trust. Okay. Now, we do a longer form type of interview, which is not what we're doing today, and we always ask the signature questions. We call it the legacy question. So if it all ended today, Emily, how do you want to be remembered? Oy vey. Yeah, I'm sorry to hit you with these, but that's the way um, it Okay, if it all ended today, I would like to be remembered as a, um, a loving sister and daughter and wife and mother, um, you know, and I would hope that I said something that made someone's life better at some point. That's great. Thanks so much for being on Moxie Talk. Thanks for Thanks being for with us today. Yeah. I'm Kurt Jacobs here at Idea Festival, and we'll have more to come. And please stick around for this sneak peek with Idea Festival founder Chris Kimmel. Hi, this is Kurt Jacobs, host and creator of Moxie Talk with Kurt Jacobs, and we're here at the Idea Festival with Nate Wonder. He's a recording artist and recording producer. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me, Kurt. What inspires you and drives you on your career path? Uh, I'm inspired by the opportunity to create uh, beautiful things that last for a very long time, things that, uh, that will inspire people right now, but also in the future. Yeah. That's great. And in your best dreams for your hopes, in other words, like a legacy question, 40, 50 years from now, how do you want those dreams to look? How do you want them to be visualized, I guess? Uh, a lot of my dreams actually, uh, a lot of songs that I write come to me in my dreams. So I hope that the songs will last for a very long time. I hope that uh, the ideas in the songs, the poetry that's there. I'm inspired by so much that has been around for so many years, hundreds of years ago. Some of the things that inspire me most were written. And so I hope that I can inspire uh, future people like myself uh, to be moved like I have been by so much art and work that I've seen. That's great. How's the Idea Festival so far for you? How's the experience? It's really remarkable. Um, I've heard so many uh, inspiring quotes and so many stories about people's lives and things that they've overcome to become really remarkable people and so um, the best word that I can describe it right now as is remarkable it's something worth talking about now in terms this is more in terms of the profession and industry that you've chosen what changes do you see on the horizon good bad or ugly in the future for future generations uh, I think that the democratization of the creation of art is something that is wonderful, important, and uh, I'm not sure exactly what will come of it, um, but I do like the idea of lots of people being able to create art. I think that, you know, art really reflects uh, progress in terms of uh, a society because it means that you have more leisure time and so it means that you can sit back and reflect on what you as a society have created and assess how well you've done it or how you haven't and also design for the future. So I think that art has a really unique responsibility and opportunity in that way and so I'm excited about what that means. Now this question we ask in our traditional format and it's our, our legacy question. When the great day comes, Nate, how do you want to be remembered? You know, God forbid it all ended today. How do you want to be remembered? I hope that I can be remembered as a generous person, someone who uh, was selfless when it came down to uh, tough questions, someone who um, took after the people who gave so much to me and continued to give to other people as much as I could. Well, that's great, Nate. Thanks so much for being with us today and all the best to your travels and future success in your career. Thanks for being here. And I'm Kurt Jacobs with Moxie Talk here at the Idea Festival. Enjoy this sneak peek with Idea Festival founder, Chris Kimmel. 
What is the best piece of advice ever given to you, Chris? It can be more than one, personal or professional. Um, you know, probably just, you know, probably the best piece of advice ever was given to me was, um, uh, was given to me by parents and, mm -hmm. you know, by others. And it was, you know, kind of do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I mean, I think that's a, it's a pretty basic thing, but I, tr I, I try to have had gone through my life and had tried to treat people, mm -hmm. whether it was personally or professionally or sure. being on my job, as I would want to be treated and to, you know, to respect them. And I always ask myself if I wouldn't want to be treated this way, if I wouldn't want mm -hmm. somebody to talk me with, talk to me this way, um, you know, then I shouldn't be, you know, I shouldn't do that to someone else. And I think that is a, it's a kind of basic thing, mm -hmm. but I think it's something that I've tried to, you know, tried to live by. If someone were to ask you, what is the single biggest positive contribution you've made to humanity, what might that be? It's a real loaded question. You can interpret it a lot of ways, societal, personal, professional. Um, that's a good question. Um, I think just, I'm a big believer in, in um, that we live in a very unpredictable world. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, serendipity plays a major, major role in the world and, mm -hmm. and in, in, in things. And I think when you talk about serendipity in a positive way, right? Um, uh, and you know, is is I've tried to try to to create a lot of events and situations and spaces mm -hmm. that are serendipitous in the sense, like the Idea Festival, right. where people ask me a lot of times, well, you know, what do you what do you hope the the outcome of the Idea Festival will be? And I literally always firmly tell them, you know, I have no clue. I really have no idea. Mm -hmm. I hope people leave and they you know, gotten a great experience and been inspired, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But the outcome of that is fundamentally unpredictable. We can create the conditions under where that kind of serendipitous learning can take place and innovation and mm -hmm. bringing people together. But the ultimate outcome is unknown and, and just fundamentally unpredictable. And I think I've tried to spend a lot of time creating those kinds of, of um, a serendipitous opportunities is probably mm -hmm. a better word okay. where very positive things can happen and we've had some you know uh, you know some examples that um, um, I think you know coming from the festival or other things that I've been involved in where I think you know that's been the rewarding thing and oftentimes they're they're individual things that have happened mm -hmm. to people it's not something big like right. you know curing right. the common cold or something mm -hmm.